Welcome to our video on how to service cartridge bearings. Now to service your cartridge bearings, you're going to need a few items. You're going to have to remove the cartridge bearings from wherever they are on your trike. You're going to need some cleaning solvent. Now isopropyl alcohol 99% or methyl hydrate work good for both steel and ceramic bearings. Varsol works good for steel and acetone, lacquer thinner and white gas are really only emergency options when you're cleaning your bearings. I personally never use them. You're going to need some grease. Now in this particular case we're going to use some Polylube 1000 by Park Tools and in the tube it's called PPL1. If these bearings were ceramic we could use the Park Tools new high performance grease or we could use one of the many ceramic bearing greases available on the market. Now these particular bearings, these are headset bearings for our Catrike 559. And as you're going to see when I take them apart, they're actually got tons of grease in them and are in very good shape. Now you're also going to need some Q-tips. I cut Q-tips in half, so one end I can poke out grease and the other end I can use the nice soft section to pull the grease out of inside the bearings. Shop rags always come in handy. And you're gonna need some kind of container to soak the bearings in, whether it be a little pot or whether it be a little shakeable container like this little Nalgene jar. No matter what you use, you need something to be able to do this. Now, this is a two ounce Nalgene jar. It's relatively leak proof, and I only do one bearing at a time in the jar. If you want to do all four at the same time, you need four little jars. Gloves are always very handy if you don't want to run back and forth to the sink or have really greasy hands. And the final item you're going to need is some sort of pick to get out the seal on the sides of the bearings. This is actually a little dental pick that we bought at our local drugstore and works really good. Park Tools and many other companies make picks as well, but cost a lot more than this one. So you decide what you want to use. We've been using this one for years. The bearing seal is actually very simple to take out. Now there are two indents in the rubber itself one close to the inner of the bearing and one close to the outer of the bearing. What you simply do is place the pick part on the inner part of the seal and try to find a gap between the little balls inside the bearing. Place the pick and push it down a little bit more and then just simply lift up and the seal will come right out. I hope I've described that okay. As you can see, this bearing has so much grease in it and it's a brand new bearing and it's wonderful shape. Good to whoever did this. All of our bearings were this way for our headset. It was amazing. And once again, you see how I simply dug in with the pick and I felt between the seal and the bearing for a space between the little balls inside. Now, once you remove the seals, what you'll actually see is one seal is narrower than the other when it comes to the bearing for the headset. The headset bearing has a shoulder and that shoulder actually makes the size of the seal narrower. So it's a narrow seal on the shoulder side and a wider seal on the other side. To clean the seal is actually very simple. You simply wipe it off. Some people like to use solvents. I find I don't because solvents can actually dry up the rubber on it itself. Now, when you look at these seals themselves, there's actually a metal ring on the inside of the seal. And that's what actually is up against the balls in the bearing. On the other side, sim simply rubber. And that's what we see when we're actually trying to take the bearing apart. Now, instead of using solvent, I just simply wipe it clean, being careful not to bend it. And if it's really bad, I could put a little bit more grease on it, rub that around on the seal itself, and then wipe that grease off and keep doing that till I have a perfectly clean seal. When I'm cleaning bearings, I start off by simply removing all the excess grease that's inside the bearing and trying to get it all out. I use Q-tips, I use a shop rag, I do anything I can to just remove all that excess grease from inside. Now there is a race that actually holds the bearings and separates them apart. You can't get between the bearings very easily, but at least you can get the excess grease out. Next, you leave it in solvent. Now whether you use a bucket like this or whether you use a Nalgene jar to do this, it really doesn't matter. With the bucket, you can do all four bearings at the same time. In the case of this little Nalgene jar, I only put one bearing in at a time so that when I'm shaking it up, I actually don't damage the bearings as they go clunk, clunk, clunk against one another. The chance is pretty small, but I'm pretty careful about things like that. So I simply put it into my Nalgene jar, give it a good shake, and what I'm trying to do is dissolve the grease 
that's around the balls in the bearing. Set it aside, wait a while, come back again, give her a shake. This time when I open the jar and look at the bearing, I can see that an awful lot of the grease is actually dissolved, but there's still quite a bit of grease left in there. So once again, I put the lid on, give her a good shake, and then I simply set it aside and let it sit, in this case, until the next day. I come back, keep shaking it the next morning, and I simply, at this point, all the grease is now dissolved off of it. And this time when I pull it out, the grease is all gone. Now, isopropyl alcohol and methyl hydrate are both very, very mild solvents. And this would have gone a lot faster if I had just used Varsol. Now, to dry the bearing, you could use canned air. In this particular case, all I'm doing is I'm just using a shop rag and I'm just wiping the bearing dry the best I can. I try to get in between the little balls inside the bearing and the little race that holds the balls and separates them. I just try to do the best I can wiping it dry and then I set it aside and let it air dry. Next, packing the bearing with grease. Now there are many options here. In this particular case I'm going to do this by hand. If you had a bearing packer like your local auto mechanic would have, they actually just hook up this bearing packer and pump grease through your bearing, getting rid of the old grease and filling it with new stuff, completely getting rid of the problem of actually cleaning the bearing in the first place, or the, the trouble that you're going to go through to clean your bearing. In this particular case, I'm showing you the simplest and most common way of packing bearings. You simply put on a ton of grease and you push it in. Now this brings us to another point, what type of grease to use. If it is ceramic bearings, you have to use ceramic grease. In this particular case, it's not a ceramic bearing, and I don't want to service it for at least a year. So I'm putting a very heavy grease in here, and I'm just stuffing it full. Now for example, if these were wheel bearings, and I was in the Olympics, what I might want to do instead of using grease is I might put a light oil inside. And that light oil, what it would actually do is would not last very long in the bearing, but make the bearing very efficient rolling. So there's this decision you have to make. Is it maximum performance or is it a little less performance and longevity of your grease the most important thing? When you grease a bearing like this, it's going to last a long time and it's really going to limit any damage to the bearing. If all you did was put oil in here, the oil drains out within an hour or two and you have the chance of the bearing getting damaged. Next you have to reinstall the bearing seals. Make sure that the metal portion of the seal is facing down towards the balls inside the bearings. Make sure you have the correct width of seal going in first, the narrow seal going on the shoulder side and a little bit wider seal going on the other side in the case of the headset bearings. And just give them a good push down. Now, if some reason you can't feel it kind of go click in your fingers or hear an audible click, grab your little pick, use the plastic end, and just gently push down on the seal. It should snap right into place. And the final part of the process is just give her a good wipe off. Give the bearing a little turn to make sure that the inner part and the outer part move nicely between each other, and you should be ready to go. Now, the process we just went through to do this particular cartridge bearing for the front headsets is no different than what you would do for your front wheels, your back wheel, uh, if it has a cartridge bearing in your particular trike. It's very simple. Uh, there's not a lot that can possibly go wrong. The only thing you want to make sure of is that you're careful with the solvents. Make sure that you're not around open flames and can start a fire or anything like that. Wear eye protection. Being careful, you shouldn't have any problem whatsoever. Once again, our trike series has nine parts as well as each part is broken down into its own section. So for example, this is part of the service and maintenance section. I hope you enjoy our videos. I hope they make sense. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you out in the trail.